about one million pesos within a period of three months. And that the Central Bank of Nigeria will provide 250 billion. As I, now I learned that the federal government, sorry, the Central Bank, whether they have provided 60 billion or whatever, we don't know where it is. Where the money go. So, if they have done that, and now what the president is telling us is that they have made provision for 100 billion naira for conversion of 125,000 vehicles. And that this will last for a period of 18 months, a year and six months. Loaded naira. If you do this for a year and six months, Nigerians would have finished, they would have gone to their ancestors. <laughs> what we are looking at is immediate solution. And if you look at the rate they brought this for 100 billion naira for 125,000 vehicles, the conversion rate should then be 800, 800,000. Those that made pro a presentation to labor and other areas are hovering around 200 and something, even with workers taking loan. So I think that should be from the same 100 billion, they are making provision to buy 3,000 vehicles. In fact, that is the same you know, envelope where everything is contained. And we don't know where this one will end. Now we thought, we pleaded with them to take about 400 billion. That is a fallout of the subsidy. That's the proceed they are getting from there. In the committee, comrades, they told us that there is no cover there. They said they have not made any savings. Comrades, comrades, but, but Mr. President in his speech, Mr. President in his speech said he has saved one trillion. Impeachable offense. Who do we believe now? Do we believe Mr. President or them? We believe Mr. President. Let them bring that one trillion. So that we we'll now look at some of these palliatives on how to handle it. Comrades, we did not agree with them on their, uh, the proposal they are making that they will share 88 million, sorry, 88,000 every household for 12 million people. What they brought to us before was 50, 50 million people. And we say that the Bureau of Statistics provided that 133 million Nigerians are multi-dimensionally poor. And there's no way they want to pay only 50 million people. But they have reduced it to now 12 million households. Congress on and on and on. You know. So that is why we have come here to make a statement that even if we get any palliative, we get anything, the Federal Minister of Justice will be a partaker. The Solicitor General will be a partaker. Whatever we are doing now is for benefit of all Nigerians. If we get the CNG option working, all of them will use it to feed their tanks. Where have we committed offense, Congress? Is it in saying that we should be governed well or that the poor must breed? Since that time, we have gotten all manner of harassment. As we are gathered here, people from Maraba and other areas, the security agencies brought them from joining this project. From all over Abuja. Will that stop us? Are we going to be humiliated? Are we going to be humiliated? Nigerian workers, Nigerian unions, are pan Nigerian organizations. We are more patriotic than even the military. As far as Nigeria is concerned, you know, our history is there. It was when Nigerian labor unions joined the struggle for political independence through the models of this world that Nigeria got political independence. The Aziki West of this world, the Far Belewa, Amino Kana, Wolaou, cannot move without listening to Imodu. It never happened. That was how they fought for political independence. They fought as partners, they fought as Nigerians. They didn't fight as we and them. Never. We are patriotic, we are united, and we have offered ourselves to offer the best of advice and for us to relate to know how Nigeria will move forward. Nigeria is at the brink. Poverty is so much in the land. Everywhere. We are doing this rally to protect the government. 
<laughs> because if we don't do this rally to protect the government and people resort to self help, it will not be in the best interest of Nigeria. As part of our patriotic commitment, we are doing this rally to maintain a united, indivisible Nigeria. This protest is done everywhere in Nigeria today to show the unity of purpose, to show the unity of our sufferings, to show that every worker in the country is suffering, to show that Nigeria is one. That is how this protest is being done. So all, for some time now you'll be hearing this governor say I will give this. This governor will say I will do this. What the governors are saying is not a product of collective bargaining. It's not a product of collective engagement. It is a, an attempt to break our wings. Yes, yes. Now you discover that even with the little fallout from the subsidy is being shared for the people up there. One of the committees we formed was a committee on a uh, cost of governance. As we talk now, they have not agreed to, for the committee to sit. How can you run a nation like this with bogus cost of governance for the leaders? And that is why no matter what you save on the subsidy, they will add it to the people up there. They will add it to our people that are up there. They will add it to people who are leading us while the poor are suffering. The proceed made from our suffering is being channeled to the uh, to the bourgeois and they are continuing to enjoy. Ordinarily, if we are told that they were saving, they were sending about 400 billion every month on subsidy. Two months after, we should be thinking about a profit of about 1 billion. We should have been channeled to reduce the suffering of all Nigerians. Now, to tell us that there is no savings there, Congress, are we going to agree? No! I will hand over to my colleague to make it put before we proceed. Solidarity the law and to ensure that we are where we are today. The man who spent a better part of his career to be fighting for the just cause for the emancipation of a Nigerian worker. The NLC president has uh, laid a very clear foundation uh, because for us, uh, so when they came to us and they said that we, that they want to share 80,000, initially they started from 5,000 to millions of Nigerians, later they now move it to 8,000 now. The question that we asked, we all asked ourselves on the table. Do you know anybody in your village that is the poorest of the poor that have received money from the conditional cash transfer? No. Do you have anybody from your village that is the poorest of the poor that received traders' money? No. Apart from the money, the jamborees that they show on television, going from market to market and giving people 3,000 at the end, they will say they have shared the money to hundreds of millions of Nigerians. So we queried it. We said, no, where is the register? Show us the data. Divide this data into states. Divide the data into local government. Divide the data into world and divide them into units. And paste these names across all the various units so that we can verify. You cannot literally tell us that you are sharing money to millions of Nigerians. At the end, you give it to maybe about two or three thousand people and the other one we enter voice mail. So we told them that this is a no, no, no. Then also, to also lay a little credence on the fact that uh, today, today we said as well, that you cannot continuously ask the masses to tighten our belt. You cannot continuously ask the masses to keep, the, we have gotten to the last hole. We have even added the additional hole trying to tighten it. But in the contrary, the political class are living in affluence. In contrary, the National Assembly are budgeting 70 billion plus extra 40 billion for them to continuously live in, in a very conducive environment. They told us 
that this money, a better part of it, is going to be used in renovating the National Assembly. We now told them, go to the Federal Secretariat, where the workers are. When you go to Federal Secretariat, to even go to some of the toilets in Federal Secretariat, you have to close your nose in order to go there. Are we not equal Nigerians? Are we not equal Nigerians? So, in, in, we clearly told them that for us, that this is a no, no, no. That you cannot be carrying such amount of money and you are pushing it into National Assembly. All of them in National Assembly, 360 plus 109. How many are they? Look at the money that you are budgeting for them. But for the entire 200 million Nigerians, you said that you have just about 500 billion naira as palliative. For us, we completely reject that. For us, it is a no, no, no. So, uh, comrades, uh, for us not to take much of your time, just to add a little bit on the fact that today, one of the greatest woes that we are facing in our country, outside the subsidy removal and the increment in the price of PMS, is the flotation of naira. There is no country in the world that allow its, its currency to be floated a hundred percent. The reason is because you have greedy people all over the world who will ensure that, that your currency be, cannot, I mean, you, for you to buy a loaf of bread, you need to use wheelbarrow in carrying money, just as what happened in Venezuela and what happened in Zimbabwe. So we clearly told them, that the greatest problem that we are facing today, is, or, or rather one of the problems that we are facing today, is the flotation of Naira. That if you leave it to market forces, the Naira may have hit 1,000 Naira to a dollar. And we know that today, we import literally everything. All the cameras that are here are all imported. Most of the things in, that we consume in Nigeria, they are imported. Even the food that we eat, the fertilizer that we use in producing those food, large portions of them are imported. So at the end of the day, they are dependent on the foreign exchange rate. If you allow the foreign exchange to keep sliding, we are going to be in a deeper problem. Today, China, they manage their currency. Japan, they manage their currency. Even United States of America, the greatest of it all, they manage their currency. So we told them, that you cannot allow this to happen because at the end of the day, Nigerians will bear the brunt. So in conclusion, in solidarity we are, Nigerian masses, they deserve the best. Nigerian masses deserve excellent governance. Nigerian masses deserve all the good things in life. So we will continuously protect the interests of Nigerian masses. Thank you so much and solidarity for Okay, the family, that you will be ready by the first quarter of 2023. It was commissioned. Is it producing? No! If we depend solely on importation, two variables are not under our control. One, the exchange rate and the cost of crude oil at the international market, which means it's going to be a vicious cycle that it has been for the past 30 years. It has been a vicious cycle and it will continue to be a vicious cycle and it will continue to affect our economy. And therefore, government must come with three plans. Immediate, medium, and long-term plan. I've not seen that on the table. It's a fire brigade approach. It's a big deal that will relieve only pain for now, but the pain will remain with us perpetually. What will address this issue is actually the issue of production. But the elites, not more than 10% of them, don't want production. They want importation because why? They benefit from importation. This is the real issue. And therefore, we must insist, we must continue to insist that our refineries will work, must work. That those elites must tell us what the refineries will work. Because this will address the so-called issue of subsidy, the so-called issue of high price. In fact, at that time, they told us if we are refining, the price will not be more than X naira a litre. That is the last solution that can address this issue. So nobody is talking about that. In fact, we even discussed the issue of power, which was headed by a minister. And we said, even the tariff of power can be reduced if we reduce the price of gas to the generating companies. And we agree on that. We recommended what can be done. But here we are today, in the same vicious cycle. And Nigerians are suffering. We are suffering. Every worker on fixed wages 
is feeling the impinge of this impact. I didn't see how the palliative will address this problem because the palliative is only a temporary measure. But the issue of the price increase will be a permanent issue. I'm telling you, once the exchange rate goes up and it continues to go up, the price will increase. Once the price of crude oil at the national market goes up, they will continue to increase. Because these are the two variables. Nobody is telling us about this. And this is what we need to interrogate. We are exporting our jobs and importing poverty. Our economy is not working because we are using the few dollars to import products. And we are giving them a permanent solution, free of charge. Can we not refine? It's not rocket science. Refining petroleum product is not rocket science. We have looked at many countries of the world. There are countries like the US that have more than 100 refineries. We have countries with 10 refineries. We have countries with 20 refineries. We have the data. What is going wrong with us? What can't we think out of the box and do what is right to fix this problem? This is where the problem is. And therefore, the so-called palliative cannot even address this issue on a permanent basis. What will address this issue on a permanent basis is for our refineries to work. However they want to do it, they should make the refineries to work. I remember at the last sitting between 2001, 2021 and 2022, they said Potapo refinery will be ready by first quarter of 2023. It's not ready. And they said the one of uh, worry, worry will actually follow. Nothing is being said about that. And then Kaduna refinery will follow. Nothing is being said about that. Because that needs to be on the plan. That needs to be what will address the problem perpetually. But once again, let me insist that no worker have gotten where we are today on the plateau of gold. It's only the struggle that can get us to where we desire as a country. And citizens must realize that. All around the world, nowhere, the bourgeoisies that form less than 10% continue to give us money. what we want. Yeah. It's not possible. Let and they feast, they feast on 90% of Nigerians. Find out how their lifestyle is. Very bogus. They feast actually on the poor. They feast on the working class. We create the wealth of this country. But yes, few people misappropriate the wealth. And we live in penury. We live in perpetual penury. In many parts of the world, including Africa, price of this product is fixed by government. I was engaging my colleague from Senegal a few weeks ago about the price of cement because some of the businessmen here also have investment in Senegal. And they said no. When they wanted to behave like the way they behave in Nigeria, Senegalese government told them, no, you cannot fix the price of cement. It's government that will fix the price of cement. We know your profit margin. We know how much you spend to do this business. And therefore, government will fix the price. In Zambia, the same thing. Government fix the price. It's about the people. Why exploit the people? And allow market forces to continue to fix on the people. When we have this product free of charge, it was given to us by God Almighty free of charge. Why should we suffer the consequences of what is happening in other countries? This is the real issue, comrades. It's the real issue. It's not rocket science. It's a straightforward issue. If we produce, it's going to be cheaper. Let me give you the last logic. The last logic is that you produce maize in your farm. And you have to separate the one that your family will eat and the one you are going to sell in the market. But in the case of Nigeria, you sell everything. And you go and be complaining that the price of this thing is high. It's because of subsidy. It's because we are not using our bread. And because Nigerians have been taken for granted for a very long time. This is the real issue. And therefore, the struggle will continue and we are going to succeed by the grace of God.